a couple months ago, we had uh, Ludo Ulrich on the 365 Deep Dive show with myself and Andy Honeycutt, and we deep dived into ClipChamp functionality and showed off some of what you can do in Microsoft ClipChamp. And in the middle of that deep dive conversation, we got on the subject of the keyboard shortcuts. And we talked a little bit about what you can do from an accessibility perspective with the keyboard. And that really got me thinking about if I could do keyboard shortcuts, I could also use the Stream Deck to um, you know, execute those commands as well. And because I've got the Stream Deck Plus here, I've got the dials. So I'm gonna show you a couple of quick tips and tricks that I've got for using the dials to help you with uh, Microsoft ClipChamp. So let's dive right in and take a look at my profile. Okay, so I've got the uh, ClipChamp uh, profile open on the Stream Deck software right here. And you can see I've got a Stream Deck Plus. It's got eight buttons across the top, and then it's got four dials in a row across the bottom. And this is what I've set up so far. Now, if you go over to the ClipChamp web app, or if you go to office.com, click on the waffle, and then click uh, ClipChamp, you, you can go into a project here and you can click on the, uh, the help section and then you can search for the word keyboard. And you'll notice that there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts that you can do like redo, undo, split clips in half, things like that. So what I did is I looked through this exhaustive list and I picked out the things that would make the most sense for me while I'm editing or recording videos in ClipChamp. So on the Stream Deck, I've got, what, six, nine buttons. So I've got three available buttons in that far column, but there's nine functions that I found are helpful for me in ClipChamp. The first one is just the ability to undo. So I've got Command-Z. If you're on a PC, that would be Control Z. So I'm on a Mac, it's going to be command for me. So I can undo an edit that I did. I can also redo an edit. So that's shift command Z. And then I also really like the idea of duplicating something. So for instance, if I've got like an annotation or a shape on the screen, a lot of times I'll duplicate that shape and use it elsewhere in the video later on. So rather than having to know to hit control D or command D, I've got a button for duplicate right here. I also find that it's really helpful a lot of times to split clips in half. So that is the S command on your keyboard, but I've also got a button with a nice icon where I can split a clip in half. And then I also find that it's really helpful to go to the start of the timeline or the end of the timeline. So I've got the keyboard shortcut for jumping to the beginning or jumping to the end. And you can see that's the command plus arrows uh, there. Now for the dial, I've got one for the uh, teleprompter and I called it scroll prompter. There's a teleprompter feature in Copilot or in um, ClipChamp that you can use uh, while you're recording. And to go up and down in that um, thing, you can just click play and it will play at a constant speed. But I wanted to make it so I could physically have my hand off screen and I could turn the dial up or down depending on if I wanted to scroll up or down at my own pace. So that's a really cool feature. And then I wanted to be able to scrub the timeline also, right? So this one is just an over left or right arrow and that will move me through the timeline. And then finally, if I wanted to zoom in and out of the timeline, and this one has a, uh, a tap button or a press button. So if I push the knob in, it will zoom to basically 100% of my view. So let's go through a few of these and show what they look like in ClipChamp. So if I'm over here and I'm in ClipChamp, if I want to, uh, you know, take this clip right here and split it in half, I could click the S button but I've got my Stream Deck available right here. I can click the split button. Now that splits right at that, that marker in the timeline. I can split that and then say that I wanna take this and I wanna duplicate it. I can then click and highlight that, that clip 
and I can hit duplicate, and now I've got another copy of that particular selection. If I want to undo and back out of that, I just click the undo button. I can click it one more time and that split even goes away so I can walk back in my history. Now, if I am moving around in the timeline, I can use my middle dial to scroll through the timeline and essentially that's just doing a left and right arrow. So I really like that because I can kind of scrub to where I want with a turn of a knob. Now, if I want to really zoom in on this particular clip, I can also use the third knob and that is zooming my timeline in and out. So I can get really, really close and then I can scrub at an even finer control along the timeline in ClipChamp using those knobs. Now I'm zoomed way, way in. If I want to zoom back to 100%, I want it to take the entire space down here at the bottom. I simply click my zoom button, so the, the third knob over. If I click on that, it shrinks the timeline to where it takes up the entire width of my window, and then I can go back to scrolling back and forth. Now, the last two buttons in edit mode are going to the beginning of the video and the end of the video. So I can click my start button. It jumps me to the beginning of the video. I can click the, uh, the end button and it takes me to the end of the video again. So, you know, you could memorize these shortcuts. You could also have them really handy as well. So the last thing that I wanna show you is the teleprompter feature. Now in ClipChamp, you can go here to record and create, and then you can record yourself with screen and camera or just a webcam, or you can even do text to speech now. I'm gonna select the webcam, and there's actually a feature now called the teleprompter. So if you click the little dot, dot, dots right here, you'll get this teleprompter that can come up and you can paste your script in and be able to use that uh, while you're recording. So when you're looking at yourself, you're looking at the words on your screen. Now, from the demonstration that we did in the live stream, we used Copilot. So I used copilot.microsoft.com to create a three minute video script about how to share a file with OneDrive. So I've got that in my clipboard. I'm going to paste that script right here. And I can even like make it smaller if I want to. And you'll see that I can click play and it will play at a constant speed. I can also, you know, speed up or slow down. I can also scroll with my mouse if I want to. But that knob that I've got, the first knob right here, is my scroll teleprompter command. And what I'm doing is just I'm doing an up arrow and down arrow. So now as I'm recording the video, I can turn this knob on my stream deck and I can have that scroll through my, um, my teleprompter if I want to. So if I get hung up on something, I can just stop. I can take my time going through this particular section of my video, and then I can scroll on at my own pace. I don't have to be at the mercy of how fast it's going um, with the automated playback. So that's the last command that I have on my stream deck. Hopefully you think that this is a great idea, and I want to share this with you as well. So you don't have to go and create all of these from scratch. If you've got a Stream Deck and you want to use it with ClipChamp, I'm going to publish this particular profile for my Stream Deck with all of these icons available. I'm going to make that available on my OneDrive and I'm going to put it in the video description below. So if you want to download this package of icons and commands for your stream deck, see the description below and you can go ahead and download that and use it with ClipChamp yourself. Um, I think that's it. I'm really interested if you've got some comments on other things that you're using your stream deck for, especially in the world of like, you know, work and enterprise productivity. Uh, let me know in the comments below because I would love to, you know, find even more use cases for my stream deck and maybe share other things that I learn in the future uh, with you. So thanks a lot for watching.